up, everybody, and happy Monday. This is Sandcast Beach Volleyball with Tri Bourne and Travis Mawerter. We got a little bonus episode in here for you today because, in case you missed it, which you probably did, because Norseka does the worst job of any quote unquote professional tour or league in all of sports at, publish, at publishing their information. Um, we, had, we did have a Norseka qualifier this weekend and two of the teams that made it out for the men's it was troy field and reed pretty in their their first tournament as a team together and the other team to make it through the qualifier so in their sake is two teams generally make it through and the third place is an alternate in case one team can't go the first place team for the men was chase frischman and avery drost for the women it was kelly reeves and Brittany howard and we'll have kelly reeves on the podcast today and making it through the other side of the bracket was Kim Smith and Mackenzie Ponnet. So two relatively new teams there for the women and a, a brand new team there for the guys with Troy Field. So what we're going to do today, we had Troy Field on the, here. Sandcast did a little quick interview with him. And we also had Kelly Reeves to talk about her new partnership with Brittany Howard. So enjoy the bonus episode. And we'll be seeing you guys on Wednesday with Madison McKibben on Sandcast. Yeah, dude. Thank you so much. It was, uh, I thought it was going to be like, because when Miles and Bill qualified against like um, Billy Allen and John Mayer, that was a pretty stacked tournament. And yeah, so that thing was loaded. Saw, yeah, when I saw this one, I was like, all right, well, we might have a chance. And you're scheduled to play Adam Roberts and Spencer Zotter first. And then the bracket got switched around and we were going to play with the Kibben brothers. And then they dropped out, and so we played Robertson Sauter instead. So it ended up working out. So we had a, a good draw on our first one, but still a tough team. It took us to three. Yeah, were you like, I mean, this was your first, there, there's a lot of different things going on. So, I mean, this was your first Norseka qualifier. Um, really, your only third technically professional event because you'd only played in two AVP qualifiers before that. You were playing with one of the greatest indoor players of all time. Like, how were you nervous? Like, what was? Take me through your mental state going into that. Oh my gosh, my mental state the morning of was terrified. I legit was so scared just to mess up or to you know disappoint this incredible athlete. So I. Um, kind of just talked to him and was honest and told him, Hey, I'm pretty nervous. And he's like, Hey, nerves are good. Like that means you're excited. And so he's kind of giving me some pointers on how to control the, the mind and control the body. But, uh, yeah, sharing the court was, was pretty mind boggling with this guy. And I know in between games, I was just asking him about all the Olympics that he's been to and, and everything like that. Um, and he's got some pretty amazing wisdom. I'd say. Uh, and how, awesome. did, how did that partnership come about? Um, so he has those training sessions in Huntington Beach. And I went to a couple of them. And then I think on Friday, the, the Friday before the tournament, he was like, Hey, there's a North Sega qualifier on Wednesday. Um, would you want to play? And I kind of almost was <laughs> like, acted like I was deaf. I was like, what? Wait, <laughs> he's, like, he's like, yeah, I do. Would you want to play? I was like, of course. Yeah, I'll do whatever it takes. And um, it might have been earlier. And he's like, oh, yeah, because the registration ends um, tonight. And then all of a sudden, he's like, actually, registration ended a while ago. I don't think we'll be able to play. And I did everything I possibly could. People were telling me, like, oh, you can want to contact Sean Scott. You can, uh, or Sean, I forget his name. Uh, you, know, you can contact him and see if you can get in. And so I emailed him right away, and I told Reed, I was like, hey, if there's any way I can get us in, we just still want to play. And he's like, yeah, um, if my shoulder's okay. And so I emailed him. He opened the registration until Sunday night, which was uh, super, super lucky for us and Reed said he wanted to do it so we signed up last minute on Sunday and uh it all it all worked out I guess yeah I'd say so and with that that first match 
did you guys you said it went to three did you guys win or lose the first set we won the first set i believe it was it was like semi close i think it was 21 17 or 18 so it was it was pretty close but um uh yeah, I was just surprised. I played Adam and Spencer with Eric Boranek, uh like two weeks prior. So I, we had some information on him. And then the second set was just back and forth, siding out between both teams. And we actually had 19-17, and then they flipped it on us and ended up winning 21-19. I just made some stupid errors towards the end and uh, kind of got in my head and as we went to the third set, Reed was just talking to me, giving me advice and saying, uh, we're telling me to wait after I pass and focus on the pass and the side out will just come naturally and different things of that and order and kind of just saying, going back to his uh, Rio Olympic games and talking to me and saying, okay, you can do this. Like just focus on the pass and we'll take it. And then we got, um, we served first and Reed filed off like three aces in a row which is a great way to start the third set. And then we, we switched 4-1, and then it was kind of side out, and then we kind of took it and won it like 15 to 7, 15 to 6. So Reed kind of did his thing in the third set, which was very thankful and very easy for me. Yeah, I'm wondering, like, did you and Reed, between you guys, did you hit a single shot the whole day? <laughs> or were you guys just banging? <laughs> um, yeah, it's pretty much – I was – surprised but not really surprised by like my passing to be served most of the time um pretty much every team we played served me and yeah i don't think reed shot a ball once but i was since i was targeted most of the time i was a uh, i was aggressive but things were just happening i was kind of like playing outside of my body you know right they would run a four on us and somehow i'd just immediately cut shot it like adam or eric Don would like break to go on the line and I've never done the shot before in my life. And I just do like a, a jumbo cut shot. And it was just, <laughs> I was seeing things for the first time and it was, it was crazy. And, you know, uh, I had that in New Zealand and I was doing everything wrong. You know, it was just somehow <laughs> we did this, you know, New Zealand, Ian would call a high line and I'd hit a, a like a, an angle swing and it just get roofed. And it was just like, well, this isn't working for us. And, um, somehow it just came together and, you know, Reed and I played pretty well together. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. And I kind of want to backtrack a little bit um, just because I haven't really even talked to you about New Zealand. I haven't really gotten a chance to sit down and, and chat with you. Like, how was the trip? I know that volleyball-wise, you seemed a little bit disappointed with how it went. But that's kind of a cool experience just to have an extended trip overseas to New Zealand with a fun guy to travel with, too, and Ian Satterfield. Yeah, I mean, volleyball... When you go, of course, you want to shoot for the gold medal and you want to, everybody wants to get first. No one goes into a tournament hoping to, you know, get third. But it was definitely a more of a, a tourist trip than a volleyball trip. And I kind of didn't have the mindset of that going into it. I didn't have a lot of money. So I was like, all right, well, everything's going to cost money if we do this more tourist stuff. <laughs> and uh, our first one, you know, we trained a little bit out here and we just didn't really couldn't like figure out what we wanted to do and we didn't even figure out an itinerary for the trip and I was landing a day early and I was staying at somebody's house I've never met before and I'm you know trying to take a bus and a and a train and a taxi like home from landing and Ian's just trying to get on the plane um to come here. So it was it was a little chaotic, very unorganized. And we got there, we played pretty well. Like we had a, a really, really challenging first set or first game against these Fiji guys and um, and it was just, you know, it wasn't what we expected, but it got us in the mindset. And, uh, when we played a hard game to get into the semifinals the next day, and then we played the guys who ended up winning the tournament, but it was just kind of like, everything was new, the FIVB format of like the pool play. So you had four people in your pool, but you didn't play all three. Cause if you won your two games, then you moved on and different things like that. So it was a little confusing and hard for us to figure it out. But I think, Throughout all the three tournaments, Ian and I switched from blocking full time to defending full time to playing left side to playing right side, all in every tournament. So it was, 
it was really, really unique um, little way of like playing volleyball. You know, I don't think anybody does that. I don't think anybody goes into a tournament and they all switch what they're doing. So uh, it was, yeah, it was definitely challenging, challenged my brain, challenged my mindset. And after the third, after the third tournament, uh, we, I kind of just broke down mentally. It was just like, you know, we're going to lose this match. It was, I think it was in the quarterfinals or something. And uh, Ian was just like, swing away. And so we essentially just ended the tournament just bouncing balls <laughs> and getting blocked straight down. And so uh, it was really, really tough. And we just, it definitely like, it hurt us in the sense of I just wasn't the partner that I should have been. And I was, I was able to, mentally figure out what what partner I should be and, you know, battle the convictions of not being a good friend and a good partner and going through that stuff. So, uh, yeah, there was a lot to figure out when I got back. And so I just took some time off and pieced everything together and, you know, made the decision that I want to pursue volleyball and, you know, battle the, the consequences of not doing so well in New Zealand. Yeah, and what you what did you figure out? Because it seems that you figured it out pretty quick, <laughs> getting Reed as a partner and then qualifying. Yeah, um, you know, just a lot of stuff that John Mayer taught me was you know stuff that we can control on our side of the net, and I found out that I'm a lot of a result based mindset. So if I you know he was asked, John was telling me. Like, what do you want to work on this game? I told him, like, I want to pass well. He's like, well, that's result-based. He's like, I want to serve every ball. In. He's like, well, that's result-based. So he kind of just worked me through my mindset. So when I got back, I just focused on a lot of communication, a lot of personality stuff, a lot of uh, focusing and everything like that. So uh, when I'm on the court and, you know, just working on communication, like no matter what, people can't take away communication from me. That's the number one thing that um, I control on my side, you know, unless somebody cuts out my tongue or whatever. But still, <laughs> so foc- focusing on that sort of mindset of being a good partner and learning from the mistakes that I made um, with Ian and, you know, just being positive, encouraging and going in it. And, you know, we're going to learn something. We're going to take something away and uh, being a team and everything like that and just focusing on what I need to do. And Reed was doing a lot of drills and before that, I was doing a lot of playing, and so I wanted to focus on technique versus uh, just going out and playing and getting game experience. And so that seemed to be my the mindset coming back into it. I was like, all right, well, my first time out on the sand back in California after New Zealand was in Ty Lewis's little drill group. And those small touches seemed to be the most beneficial to my mind and to like me progressing and what Reed does in Huntington is incredible and it's a really fun thing to be a part of. So I think that's where the mindset changed is more improving now. And instead of coming home and watching the office, I'll just turn on FIVB volleyball and kind of just watch volleyball and more look at it as an analytical standpoint versus just something to pass the time. So, kind of that mindset switched and more professionalism too, like getting on a proper nutrition diet, having, you know, maintaining life at home as far as a clean room and everything like that. And kind of focusing on that side of it really helped me get back into, uh, into the state of wanting to do it. And it seemed like it worked out. Yeah, I'd say so. And, and with, so, I mean, you left New Zealand, it seemed like with kind of a sour taste in your mouth and then, this was your first tournament since then. Did you have any mental hurdles just playing it, just like in that first set, just kind of like trying to avoid whatever happened in New Zealand? Or was Reed kind of like coaching you through that? Or did all those small touches just help you sort of wash that out anyway? I would say most of the small touches um, washed it out. But I think it was Reed, like having his presence on the court and everything he was teaching me because we played Avery and Case the Monday and Tuesday before that. And um, just little things he was saying, you know, Tuesday I was kind of down on myself and I was was not hand-setting well. I wasn't doing a lot of things. And he was just teaching me, he's like, when we get down, 
just pick your head up no matter what. And he would always tell me, take a deep breath. And so even before the guy's serving, I can hear Reed take a huge deep breath and it forced me to take a deep breath. And it was just controlling the nerves, controlling the mindset. And so it was like almost prevention from me getting in the mindset of everything that happens in New Zealand. I was like with him breathing all the time. And legit, it was hilarious. It was every time, like even sometimes he would set in the middle of a rally and I could hear him take a deep breath and right before he was about to hit in a transition ball. You could hear him take a deep breath and these little things every single time someone is about to serve and you know, you just tell me, just wait, 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 take a deep breath. Wait, wait, wait. That's kind of lead is in my head the whole time. So our first set, there was a lot of deep breaths being taken and they were serving me and Reed was making great calls and he was setting really well. So it really was easy to break the New Zealand mindset. And then, uh, yeah, I felt like throughout the whole tournament, even losing in the finals was was okay with me. I was like, you know, of course you want to win. And I was a little bummed about that. And I know I didn't play the potential or, you know, how we puts it like max potential. I didn't really <laughs> give it my all, but, uh, I was able to learn from that and just learn from the little mistakes and even, you know, everything you're saying, you can, you can hear the truth in it and you're just like, you're hoping your body can, can put it together. Right. And so you, you work through Adam and Spencer in three and then, I mean, there's so little information on Norseka events. How did your match with Eden Zahn go? Was that the, was that the match to get in uh, against Eden Zahn? Yeah. So playing Ed and Zahn was the one to make it to the finals. So that was our semis. And I played them once in the Laguna Beach Open when I like first started volleyball. I think that was like right after I met you or maybe before I met you. <laughs> um so I was pretty raw when I played him, and we almost beat him. We had it to win the first set, and then the second set was super close in the Ligon Open. So when we played him this time, I had a little bit of information. Um, but the first set was just high-level volleyball, just side out after side out after side out. And we ended up having set point. I think it was 21-20. And then they flipped it on us and went 22-21. And then we battled, 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 and I think we ended up taking the first set 27, 25. Whoa. And with all, with all that momentum, it was just into the next set, moving on, and we were able to find out what these guys were doing. And Zahn wasn't really hitting any balls, and so we took that information and kind of played the defense around that. And the second set was um, was kind of a, not a blowout, but it was, it was we just felt in control. And I think we end up winning like 21, 16, 21, uh, 15 or something like that. So it's definitely a, a huge swing. I think whoever would have taken that, that first set would have had the momentum to win the second one. And thankfully and luckily we were the team to, to take that first set. And so that was, I know it wasn't the finals, but you don't need to win a Norsega to qualify. So that was the match to, to get your, your Norsega bid, right? Yeah, but me being so inexperienced and kind of stupid, I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> I was just like, all right, so what do we have to do? Like, who did we? I was kind of just focused. And maybe that helped me with my mindset because if I was focusing on that, maybe that would have taken my, my focus off the guys across the court. I was just like, whatever I'm going to do, I am not going to lose to Ed and Eric. That was kind of like a mindset. I'm going to do whatever it takes. And, Reed was playing out of his mind in just unbelievable um, defensive plays in the second set. And uh, in the first set, we were just finding our bearings. So I was just hoping, I was like, all right, so if we win this, I didn't even put, like think about the finals. And I think that's what changed my mindset too, because in New Zealand, and I always have a tendency, even in training, to like, always be watching other courts and doing different stuff like that. And someone was telling me about Karch, and he would just watch the ball and just focus on the ball. And not once was I worried about what was happening on every play, even though Ben and Brandon, I can hear them cheering against Miles and Bill. And I'm like, for a split second, thought, oh, did they win that one? And then just refocus, refocus, refocus. So it was it was really interesting. And I think the focus aspect really helps us capture the victory. Yeah. And then did you said that in the moment you didn't know that you qualified, did you 
did you know like before you started the final against Chase and Avery that you had qualified like was there did someone take that pressure off for you or, or were you still just like oh my god we still got to win one more uh no someone took the pressure off and I think it was Miles um and he was just like dude you did it and I was like I don't know what we did and he's like you just qualified <laughs> for Norseka he's like no matter what the top two teams go out and I was like okay well I beat like Chase and Avery before this week. I'm like, so we can go do it first. And it was not the case. <laughs> and I think that's from all my It's just like, we've played these, this team two days in a row and we've had some success on them. And uh, I was like, all right, well, no matter what, we still go. But like, how do you still compete at a high level knowing that you're still like, you know, it's like whose line is it anyway at that point? It's like everything's right. made up and the points don't matter. But um, so. It was it was rough, and they played really really well. I think for the predominant, um, the first time in the tournament, people were serving Reed, and I think that's when it kind of just it, it took a turn. I was like, wait, they're serving Reed, and I'm more thinking about not doubling these sets and how to set him high and how to do all these different things, and they end up just taking it away in the finals. But it was a relief to to lose and still be rewarded, I guess. Yeah. You say. Um, but losing sucks anyway. And so <laughs> I was kind of just like, it was tough because Reed was like, we beat these guys. We can do it. He's like, when this team's close, like we have a chance, but if they start taking it away and the second set, they were just running away. Chase was, you know, being Chase Frischman, uh, like digging unbelievable balls and Avery was getting blocks. And it's tough when you see a, a team like that. And I haven't really experienced that. You see a team that you watch on TV and now you're playing them and then all of a sudden, all these successful things are happening on their end. And you're like, all right, how do you, how do you come back? Like, what do you do? I just couldn't figure out. I was like, how do I block these guys? How do I do this? And I think that how do I, how do I, how do I put me in a a hard mental state? And so there's a a lot to conquer on that end, but still really, really cool to play some guys that, you know, you don't really get the opportunity to play it. Right. And then moving forward. So, I know that you said that there's a conflict. You're supposed to play in, in what, Thailand with Chase? Yeah. I think it's like Sutton or something like that. Yeah. And Sutton. that's and that that conflicts with the first one, and then the second one conflicts with Huntington? Yeah. So there's two in um, Mexico, two North Seikos, and I believe the second one – conflicted with mm-hmm. Thailand. And so um, I believe that Chase and Avery are going to the second one, but they aren't going to the first one. So Reed and I are the number one team going to that one, and then we'll be the number two team for the second tournament. Okay. So then um, I don't even know, so, do you even know how it works. So, so Chase and Avery, would that, would their first tournament then go to what Eden's on for getting third? Yeah, so um, so I think for the first tournament in Mexico, Ed and Eric would get first pickings. Okay. And then if they didn't want to go, then Miles and Bill and then so on and so forth down the line. Okay. Well, this has been a, a heck of a year for you so far. We're not even four months in, and you've traveled to New Zealand to play on the New Zealand tour. You're about to do two stops in Mexico, and then potentially, depending on the partner, pick up, uh, a four star FIVB all by May. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty unreal. I've never been the type of person to get super overly excited because I hate, you know, like disappointment. I feel like the more you build it up, the more you'll get disappointed. But everyone's been encouraging me just enjoy the moment, enjoy what's, what's right in front of you and to even. You know, it's been my goal this year to play in an FIVB, and if I could do it in my hometown, almost in Huntington Beach, that would be like one of the greatest blessings ever. <laughs> so, uh, if that happens, I'll, it would be um, ecstatic and so appreciative. And if it doesn't, then that just means I get to work harder for the goal of, you know, in an FIVB this season. Yeah. But uh, let alone to rep- represent the U.S. for the North Seca is. It has always been um, a dream of mine. I played, you know, very briefly on the like U23 uh, high performance team, 
where I met Miles and met all these people that I now uh, play against. And uh, just seeing USA on three and doing little things like that kind of just gives you goosebumps. And, you know, just playing for your flag and representing a country. And so I know it's not the Olympics, but the North Sica is going to be a huge, a huge blessing um, to be there and to have the stars and stripes on your shirt or, you know, before we get to our next guest, Miss Kelly Reeves on Sandcast, just wanted to give a quick shout out to our awesome sponsors. First up is VolleyballMag.com, which is, of course, your daily digital news source for all things volleyball, from NCAA women and men to beach volleyball on all levels to international and more. VolleyballMag.com, the only media outlet that covers our sport on all fronts every day. And our other sponsor, we love them to death, Marriott Vacation Club Rentals. They offer the best vacation accommodations in the world's best vacation destinations. Wherever you travel, Florida to Hawaii, Europe to California, choose to rest in our luxurious guest rooms, suites, or villas for your next getaway. Villas offer all of the comforts of home, including a full kitchen, living, and dining area, and separate bedrooms. Stay with the Marriott name you know and trust. Book big spaces in great places today. Visit www.mvcrentals.com. Big thanks to Troy Field for coming on, and a congrats to him for making it through the North Saker qualifier. And now on to our interview with Kelly Reeves, who qualified with Brittany Howard. Uh, well, congrats on the North Saker win the other day. That's awesome. Yeah, it was exciting. Super fun. Was yeah, good, uh... first event of the year. Not a bad way to start. I know. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. And so you had, I mean, the, the info on North Saker is, is it's so bad. Um, so I don't even know like what the bracket would have looked like for you guys. Um, so who, I guess, take me through your path to start. I know that you guys were the five seed. Yeah. So we were the five seed. So we were supposed to play our morning match at 9am, but the team that we played or were supposed to play, they pulled out last minute. So we actually got a buy, which actually worked out great. Nice. <laughs> so our first match, we played Irene Pollock and Amanda Dowdy. Okay. Um, and we beat them in two, which was awesome. <laughs> and then I don't remember the scores, honestly. I didn't really keep track. But our next match, we played Emily Stockman and Kelly Larson. Okay. So new partnership, beat them in two. And then the finals was Kim Smith and Mackenzie Ponnet, and we lost in two. Okay. And in the finals for North Seca is that the, it doesn't really matter, right? Correct. I mean, obviously, if you win, you're guaranteed to go to all three events. If you're the two seed, you just have to get confirmation. Normally in the past, um, every North Seca that I've done, they've always taken the one and two. So we're still waiting to hear back from Phil, but I'm, I'm like 80%, 95% sure we'll go to those events. Okay. So, yeah. Well, very cool. And so, then, so you mentioned that you, you played against a new partnership, but you also are, ha you're enjoying a new partnership. Looks like you and Brittany right. got off to a nice start. Um, yeah. So when did, uh, and take me through that formation. Cause I know that Brittany's still relatively new to the beach. I know she played at Pepperdine for a year, but, um, I don't know if you get Dig Magazine, but they did a spread on on Brittany and um, Nina Matthews was just like, yeah, she was pretty brutal when she first started. So obviously she's gotten <laughs> <laughs> she's gotten much better. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, you know, with Jen being pregnant, she's actually due next week. You know, new partner was kind of something that I need to do this off season, and I definitely kind of explored my options, um, but I you know, whether it was being a defender or a blocker because there's so limited blockers in the field right now. Um, but, you know, Brittany Howard was someone who I've always been kind of watching from afar. And she was doing some traveling in the fall. She went to study abroad. So I told her, I was like, well, when you get back, I'd love to get in the sand and like try it out and, you know, get some trainings in. And then we did, and it just felt super comfortable. Like, I don't know, we just had... It just seemed, I don't know, just like the chemistry thing was like big and like we're definitely volleyball people. Um, and I kind of understood where she was as far as she's kind of the up and coming. So I don't know. I just kind of took a chance with her. And I don't know, just from the first time we stepped into the sand, it was like, whoa, this girl, she's got some game. <laughs> yeah. 
And yeah, so, I mean, go ahead. No, just, I mean, we've been kind of in the sand for, we've been like training for like about a month now, I'd say. So, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. so I know you mentioned the chemistry part is big. Um, in terms of volleyball wise, though, how is it just is kind of playing with a new blocker? Like, what have you guys figured out as a team? Um, we're still trying to figure that out. Like, there's some technical things that we need to, you know, go over, you know, and start, like fine tune some stuff because she's still fairly new, and you know, I'm still learning too, which is which is cool, which is kind of unique about our partnership. Is like we're both, you know, still new to the game. Like, granted, this is my third season, but I'm still learning a ton. And she's still learning a ton too. And it's kind of nice to learn and grow with someone and kind of in the same boat. Um, but yeah, I think we, our communication is pretty good on the court and we're just super hungry and eager to just get better. And I think that's kind of something that, I don't know, I really like about our partnership for sure. Yeah. So, and you cool. mentioned that you were kind of keeping an eye on her from afar. What did you, yeah. I, I guess when you were watching, cause I know that she had a good end of the season. I think she, she qualified for Hermosa Manhattan and Chicago. So I guess, what did you right. see in her game that you liked? And then when you started playing with her, was it what you expected? Um, yeah. So I, we faced, I faced her a couple times or maybe it was just Manhattan beach. We, I faced her in, in one of our matches and I was playing, I wasn't with Jen at the time. So I don't know. She just was like, she did some like really funky stuff. And it's like, okay, like I can work with that. And then she had some good finishes towards the end of the year. And I'm like, all right, well, looking towards next year and knowing that Jen was out, I was like, all right, she's definitely like someone I would want to play with. And I think as soon as we kind of got in the sand, she, there was just one play. I just remember she just had this like nice scoop uh, or it was like a block pull move. And she just went up like, she dug it and I set her and she came in and just like crushed this ball. And I was like, okay, she's got some game. <laughs> and then, yeah, I was just like, all right, I think this is what I want to do. So yeah. And like, we've known each other for, um, for a while, just playing college volleyball against each other in the PAC 12. She went to Stanford. I went to UCLA. So we've kind of known each other through the volleyball world. And then, yeah, just from watching her play against her last year, in uh manhattan i was like all right this girl she definitely you know caught my eye so kind of cool it's funny watching with beach volleyball just watching former rivals become teammates yeah <laughs> oh no and like stanford like i always respected stanford and like we always wanted to beat them and like she was on that team and like granted i don't think we beat them the year she was there or maybe we did but like it was like an intense rivalry, rivalry, but like a respectful rivalry. It was like super cool. So, yeah. <laughs> and now, what about what about your own game? Have you been working on in the off season? It looks like whatever it was, it paid off pretty well. Yeah, um, I think this off season. I mean, I didn't really take too much time off. I think after Chicago, I took like three weeks where I didn't touch a ball, and then I moved up here in October, and then I just hit the sand. I just played with everyone played games, I drilled, played with guys, just kind of tried to better my game and just keep getting touches because I'm still playing kind of catch up with everyone. Um, and I just know that like, you just have to keep getting reps and keep playing. And I just played a ton. I worked on some technical stuff as well. Um, but yeah, I kind of just played as much as I could. I would train, I trained with literally everyone, I think. <laughs> <laughs> So That's I took advantage of, of it. it just, yeah. And I think, you know, I tried to get in the sand as much as I could and I still am and just kind of prepping for the season. So, yeah. And so this is your, well, you mentioned that you moved up here. Where did you move from and where'd you, where'd you uh, move to? So I'm originally from San Diego. So I was living at home for two years. So yeah, I was down there and then I commuted. Jen and I would commute to Huntington and then it just depended on the week. We go twice in Huntington, once in San Diego, or twice in San Diego, once in Huntington. And then we tried to get to the South Bay a little bit, but it was more towards like the Hermosa Manhattan tournaments that I was up here. But okay, yeah, I was doing the commute. Yeah, that's a trek. Well, I know it was a trek. So then I was like, well, 
moving to the South Bay was always in the plan. I just needed to kind of save up. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. Right. So, and then I finally just was like, I need to be in the sand. Like this is where all the greats are. It's the Mecca. And finally, you know, made the trek up here and just, I love it. It's super fun. Yeah. No, it's, it's, the right, a... it's the right. And like for what I want to do and pursue volleyball, like beach, like this is you, this is the place. Like, you know, this is where all the greats come and just being in the sand alone. Like, it's insane. It just makes your game that much better. So. Yeah. And I'm sure that that made it easier to train with as many people as you ended up training with too. Oh yeah. No, for sure. I was training with everyone. It was super fun. I played with like a different ball, like every day, like going back from the Mikasa, the Wilson to Moulton, Casa. It was awesome. It was super fun. The Moulton, the ball that they use for the Norsecas, it trips me out. Just that like lime green and white. It's, it's the weirdest oh. looking thing. It is the pingiest ball ever. It just pings. It's just, and then when there's wind, it like sails. It's like, what? But I think it makes you, your game better just with the touch on it. And that's one thing that I've kind of worked on is just touch on the ball all off season and just feeling it on your, you know, your platform and just getting comfortable with that. But yeah, that ball, it's, it's a trip. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious, what's your favorite ball to play with? Cause I mean, there's the Mikasa, which I, I think that's the toughest ball to play with. And then there's the, yeah. the pingy Moulton and then there's the Wilson. I like Wilson. I mean, I always grew up with it. Um, I mean, I train with it every day. I mean, I do, I mean the Mikasa ball, it's, it's like a love hate relationship relationship, but I definitely love the Wilson ball. That's my favorite ball. I would say the yeah. Mikasa. Because Mikasa, like, if you face that tough server, like, that thing floats. It can drop. It does some, no. it does some crazy stuff with floaters. It's so aerodynamic. But, I mean, that's the ball to pursue the international route. And, yeah, it is what it is. But yeah. Wilson's, not, Wilson's definitely the fave. <laughs> and, uh, and speaking of, like, an international route, so you played Norsecas two years ago with Ali McCulloch. Um, and you guys did pretty well. And then you took last year off of, of ca any kind of international play, right? Correct. Yeah. So I guess, what are the, the goals moving forward? Is that something that you want to keep pursuing? I guess, how come you didn't play any, any Norsecas or just kind of lower level FIVBs last year? Uh, well, because Jen, our part, like Jen was, we kind of just focused on AVP and like one thing that I kind of had goals for last year was like, I wanted a top, top five finish and I got two. So that was a huge stride. And I really want to just focus on, you know, climbing the ranks and the AVP. And then we kind of just put hold on the international. Jen didn't really want to do that. And I was like, that's totally fine. And I was kind of going back and forth. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to stick to one thing. AVP is going to focus. And I want to, you know, hit my goal of making it to Sunday. And did that in Seattle and San Francisco, and it was awesome. So I'm glad I did it. And then this year, I kind of want to get back with the international, starting with the Nursegas, and then maybe a couple one and two stars towards the later half of the calendar year. But AVP is definitely the focus. Okay. And then just chipping away with the international. Um, I mean, as you know, I follow along and every it's super competitive on the women's side. Yeah. Right now. And um, you know, I'm I'm definitely looking more long term than short term. I mean, 2020 would be awesome, but I'm kind of prepping for the long the long haul. Right. That makes sense. And yeah. so are you and Brittany is it was this sort of like a tryout tournament or like do you guys do you think you're going to run the season together or are, is it still sort of experimenting time? <laughs> Um, I think we're going to run it. I think, I mean, we had a really good showing on Wednesday and I think we were both really excited to compete because we both hadn't competed since Chicago. Um, but yeah, we're going to start the season off. We will be playing in Huntington and obviously doing those, um, Norseka. So yeah, we're going to, we're going to see how it goes. Yeah. All right. And what do you think about the yeah. format for Huntington? I know that, I mean, just from like a fan's perspective, it's pretty awesome, but from a, from a player's perspective, what do you think? Cause this is like, an AVP, like the best of an AVP combined with the best of an AV, of, of an FIVB and then whoever comes out of the qualifier. Oh, no, it's awesome. I think it's going to be 
it's going to be stacked for one. And I think it's cool that we're, you know, growing the sport with other countries. And I think, um, no, I'm very excited. I think it's going to be a stacked term as far as competition and like the level, and you're going to get really good games of volleyball, both on the men's and the women's side. And I think it's just a great way to really, you know, grow our sport and show people like how hard our sport really is, you know, and like bringing other countries in because sometimes like Fort Lauderdale, not everyone can make it and to do it in a kind of in our backyard in Huntington and like showcase this, like how cool, like, I think it's great. I love it. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. I, I think it's super cool. Now, do you know if you and Brittany, cause I know that she doesn't have a ton of AVP points. Um, do you know if you guys will be in that top 15 to make it in or will you be, will you be in this monster of a qualifier? Um, you know, I've kind of calculated the sum of the points, but I mean, you never know with all the switching going on on the women's side, who's partnering up with who. Um, I mean, whatever draw I get, I'm just, I'm ready to play. And if we're in the qualifier, so be it. If we're in the main draw, awesome. But I think we may or may not get in the main draw. I might have to, you know, apply for the wild card. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but Whatever, whatever card we're dealt, we're just ready to play. We're ready to compete and just go for it. Yeah, so, I like it. We'll see. Yeah. And Same. when do you? So what? What's the North Sega schedule from here? That so is it? It's two events that you guys qualified for, right? Or is it three? There's three. So it's the third. It's the third fourth weekend of April. So it goes Mexico, Mexico, Cuba, then Huntington. Okay. But we're gonna take Cuba off. Uh, we're going to go two weeks in Mexico. I think it's, what's the dates? Hold on. I wrote them down. Uh, so the first one, it's the 12th through the 15th. And then it's the 19th through the 22nd. And then Cuba would be that next week in the 27th through the 30th. And then it would be Huntington, but we're going to take Cuba off. So we have time to rest and kind of get ready for Huntington. Okay. That makes sense. That's a, that's a fast start to the year for you guys. <laughs> yeah. So we definitely want to do, you know, the North Seca. I think that's good. Just, you know, first time traveling, all that stuff. And then Huntington, I mean, that's going to be, that's going to be a loaded tournament. So we want to be ready for that. And it's going to be with the Mikasa ball. So we want to give us time at least to kind of prep and kind of get some, get all our shanks out before we hit the <laughs> You know? <laughs> that's the confidence you want to hear right? <laughs> it's definitely a confidence confidence booster we need that before Huntington but and then looking forward I'm not sure about the other North Seca qualifiers but we're going to do as much as we can um, but definitely the focus is AVP and then do as much international as we can as well and build That'll do it for our bonus Monday episode of Sandcast. Good luck to all of our guys and gals who qualified for the Norsecas in Mexico, Mexico, and Cuba. And we will, get, we will catch you guys on Wednesday with your regularly scheduled Sandcast with Madison McKibben.